What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're taking a look at a game called Airships Conquer the Skies, which I've actually had a lot of fun with. This is like an odd, goofy game that it's really hard to describe to people, but roughly the what you do in the game is essentially in the title. You build airships custom with all kinds of weapons and all kinds of mods and all kinds of builds and all kinds of flight ceilings and stuff like that, and then you use them to win a campaign on a Mountain Blade style map where you fly around with your airships conquering territory, making money, doing research, and all that kind of fun stuff. This game is fun for a lot of reasons, and this game has already sold me on the core concepts. I played it for a couple of hours last night to get ready for this video, and this is a game about experimentation and dumb ideas. Like, the dumber you play this game, the more fun you're gonna have with it. Like, you can build your airships to be peak efficient and be perfect and be undefeatable and stuff like that, but I found that the game is the most fun when you just take an idea and you run with it. Like, this airship is gonna be able to fly super high up in the air and drop bombs on things miles below it. This airship over here is just gonna be full of marines, I'm gonna crash it into the enemy ship, suicide bomb them, and all of my marines are gonna jump onto their ship and kill them before we both crash down to the ground. Like, this is a game where goofiness is encouraged, and the more fun you have with building and theorizing strange airships, the more fun you're gonna have. And so without further ado, let's get on in here. We're gonna play the game in conquest mode. We'll go with a new game right now. Uh, we can pick our arms right now, and the various crests that you create for the center of your shield right here, your coat of arms, is gonna give you different bonuses. So for example, if we put an anvil right here, a uh, steel armor costs half as much. Steel armor is pretty good in this game. It's not bad. This game has kind of like a steampunk environment. Some people are going to like that. Some people are not. I'm not a huge steampunk fan, but for whatever reason, it works in this game, and I like it a lot. Uh, mountain is pretty good. Like, if we have the mountain right there, that'll give us... It looks like a poo. Like, if we just made that, like, is there brown on here? I was going to say I was going to have a big brown poo in the middle of my flag. But, yeah, we can get different sigils on our flag. This gives us different stuff. So, for example, if we get the dragon, we start out with the dragon riders research. That's right. You're not just limited to airships. That's what I like about this game, though, is that it's so fun. Like, this game is not afraid to put new ideas in. Like, you can get dragoons, which are, like, these guys... They, they, they'll disembark from your airship, and they're, like, riding on little, like, steam motorcycles and, like, firing pistols at the enemy. You can get guys that ride on dragons and throw grenades at the enemy. Like, it's a game that has all kinds of things, and all of those things are fun. At a fundamental level, they're just fun, and you're like, Oh my god, I didn't even know I could do that. I want to build an airship designed around this concept now. And it, it's pretty cool. Now we can put the eagle on our flag that doubles our accuracy. We could put the guillotine on it right there, which means that if a city revolts, it automatically joins our empire. Uh, we can go with a lion right there, which allows us to reload faster when we've boarded the enemy. And there's all kinds of little bonuses right here. Like It really comes down to whatever you think is the most valuable. Uh, the waves is pretty good in my opinion because fires tend to be what kill your airships faster than anything else. Like Even if you have fire suppression systems, Fires are really, really, really bad in a game where everything is made out of wood. And you tend to you tend to burn pretty quickly. And so fire like my goal when I fight an enemy airship is to set them on fire about as fast as I possibly can. Because fire is just really, really good in this game. Uh, if we go with the scales right here, we get more money from our cities. Doesn't really there's also a whole bunch of them down here that don't give anything, and it's just decorative. You can do whatever you want. Uh, if we get a harpoon, it'll give us military tactics and aerial tactics training. Uh, we can get a lozenge. Apparently that gives us energized suspendium, high pressure suspendium, and scientific suspendium mining. All right. And we can go with a spearhead right there. It's just pick and choose, in all honesty. All of these things have their merits. All of these things will help your campaign out in one way or another. I'm going to go with the wrench. And then we're going to make the wrench silver in the middle of our flag. And then I think I'll probably make the center portion of my flag yellow, like so. That looks pretty good. I can accept that. It's not a perfect flag. It's not a, we can also change the design of the flag over here if you want to so that like it has different layouts or whatever, whatever you tend to like. That's actually pretty cool right there. I kind of like that one with the cross. Uh, you can go with just a plain charge. I think I kind of like that right there. We'll go with that. And so that sounds pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and back on out of here. We also get to name our kingdom. We're going to call ourselves the Booty Rushers. No, not the Booty Ushers. The Booty Rushers. Perfect. And so there it is, all in capitals. We get to choose the things that we want from our campaigns. We've got our map size, we've got our difficulty, we've got our land mass, so it can be a continent, it can be an archipelago, it can be a mix between the two. I would say to go with a continent for right now. Archipelago, it's really, really easy on the archipelago. 
it's easy to isolate land masses and protect them forever on the archipelago, in my opinion. Like, there tends to be really, really good choke points that make things a lot simpler. Uh, we can choose how many monsters are going to be on the map. Things like dragons and flying creatures and krakens and stuff like that. You can say that there can be monsters everywhere, or you can say that there are no monsters, anything in between. I'm going to leave that on default. Our research speed is going to be on normal. We're starting out with Tier 1 technology, which I think is... A good starting place. If you start out at zero, the fights tend to take forever because it's the equivalent of cavemen in airships throwing rocks at each other. Like, tier zero starting out, you're basically only going to have access to rifles, and so it's going to take four ever for the early battles to resolve themselves. With tier 1 weaponry you start to get basic explosives like 1700s, 1600s, kind of renaissance cannons and grenades and grape shot and stuff like that that makes the fights not too fast but also not too slow. And then by the time you get to like tier 5 technology you've got all kinds of strange laser cannons and you're firing dragons at each other and it just gets wild. It gets really really wild. So let's get our city built, let's get going, and let's fly the friendly skies of Splattercat Air. All right, so here we are. Uh, Booty Rushers is your home city. Cities that are yours have your flag. Every city you conquer gives you more income, but they must also be defended. We've started out on this kind of... Oh, never mind. I thought this was water over here. I thought we were kind of like the, the northern side of Europe, essentially kind of like Germany, France, whatever. The maps can be kind of interesting, but this is the layout of our map right now. This is going to get chaotic pretty quickly. Uh, we are surrounded. We should probably do our best to kill this faction and kill this faction as soon as possible. That way we've got a corner of the map, and from there we can start defending our borders properly. We've got our starting fleet. That's our little guy right here. We've got this strange-looking airship. I have no idea what this thing is. Let me look at it. So what is this thing? Hold on. So we've got a steel deck right there. We can move at high speeds but offer no protection. This is the front end of the ship. It looks like we've got mostly riflemen on the front of the ship. This default craft is strange. We do have a good coal supply. So the parts of your ship that you need to know about. Actually, I'll go through that when we build our own custom ship. How about that? We don't need to talk about it right now. But this ship appears to be armed with mostly riflemen. And I don't think that I'm that stoked about it. I'm going to get rid of these decks right here. I don't think we need them. They seem kind of useless to me. And honestly, I'm not a giant fan of riflemen. Like, rifles just don't do enough damage, in my opinion. Like, they do damage, and they'll kill crew off, but they won't mess up armor. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. And so I think I'd like to have two cannons on the front of this guy, just in case. Just to make things a little bit safer. Now, that did cost us 150 bucks right there for the refit, but I think that works better for me. And then we need to build up our fleet. So the game wants me to build myself another aircraft right now. That's easily done. It wants me to conquer these guys over here. I mean, they do have a pretty good... Apparently, that's the land of Cooter. All right, I didn't name it. That wasn't me. We've got Toothford, Kanata, we've got Northwestix, Optin, Cetius, Zernaglesh, Zer Abin, Iz. We've got Kirkham Farum, Deep Castle, Tiz, Leakersoth, Corono, and Zim. All right. Uh, so if we wanted to build ourselves a ship, we go to our capital right now and we say design a ship. Or we can build a ship. We have a bunch of like default ones right here that they just come with. These have already been built for you. And you can just mash them out real fast. So we've got like the Bubo right here, which looks like it's a rifle craft. We've got the Cranium, which I think that's a ram on the front of that right there. Yeah, that's a ram. And so this is actually like a sabotage ship. The point of this ship is just to rush the enemy and headbutt them. And we've got the Creosote. That's an okay starter ship. It's not bad. It's cheap. It's effective. And it's got the things it needs in order to function. The Mutilatrix. Looks like it's mostly grenadiers, so this guy's going to be kind of a suicide barge, too, where he rolls up on the enemy and just starts throwing grenades at him out of the windows. I'm not a big fan of grenades. They're not my favorite weapon, but, you know, you could do that. We can design a ship if we want to. You can do that from scratch. So let's talk about building ships, shall we? This is going to be kind of a... This is going to be a wordy episode because there's a lot of stuff to learn in this game if you're into it. So at Tier 1 right now, this is all the stuff that we can build over on the side of our ship. That's everything. This is what we can put together. 
And so we've got shapes and decorations over here for filler blocks, just in case you want to do that. We have figureheads, we have curves, basically anything you want to throw on the ship, you can probably find around. Just be aware that all of these things have weight, and all of these things kind of mess with the flight ceiling of your ship. So I'm going to take that right there. I don't want to flip both of it. I just wanted to flip the module. There we go. Perfect. So we'll put that guy right there just to make it look a little bit sexier. I don't think I can flip that upwards, but I could take this one right here. Does That that flips it horizontally. There we go. And technically, I could do something like that right there if I wanted to. However, that is going to limit our surface space, unfortunately. Or we could leave gaps, and we could fill it out like so. It's possible. I'll think about it. But there's a few things that every airship needs in order to function. So the first thing that you're going to need is a suspendium chamber. Suspendium chamber is basically the magical device in this game that allows the airship to stay in the air. In case you were wondering. Uh, we can drop that right there. So we have a suspendium chamber now. The suspendium crystal is what allows us to fly. Our service ceiling is almost a kilometer into the air, which is really, really high up. Uh, in order to fuel the suspendium, we're going to need a coal chamber. So there's our coal chamber right there. So we've got the coal that we need to fly. That's going to give us 50 coal. That's enough to weather a reasonably sizable battle. And the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need crew quarters because we need people to man the hatches and batten things down. So there it is. Uh, we've got ourselves a crew section. It's saying that that's non-functional right now. That's because it's not attached to a ladder or it's not attached to a corridor. Don't worry about it. We'll fix that in just a second. It's not a big deal. Uh, we also need a propeller. That'll generate thrust for our little ship. So we'll put that right there. I may have to change these around right here too, but we'll worry about that. In fact, we'll take those off right now. There we go. All better. We've taken that off. Let's get the let's get the bare basics into, into motion before we fiddle around with anything else. We're also going to take off the crew quarters real fast. So we need a bridge. That could go right there. We need a crew quarters. That can go right there. I would like to have maybe an empty block space right there. Let's go ahead and we will take a filler block. I don't know if that'll actually work. I think you need a corridor for it to actually work, I think. Do we have corridors anywhere? Let me take that off real fast. Let me let me remove that module. There we go. Do I have corridors around? Where are corridors hiding at? They gotta be around here somewhere. So we got resources, we got troops, we got marine barracks, guard posts, that's not what I need. There we go. There's our corridor. It was the first thing listed. So, we can have a corridor right there, and now you see that it connects to the ladder. These parts are all ready to go now that we've found the corridor. Uh, we need to... What else do I need here? It needs supply hatches. Yeah, supply hatches are kind of... Let's remove that module right there, and we need a corridor with a ladder. There we go. Perfect. Looks good to me. I probably would have liked to have had a little bit more stuff... On this side, but we'll put a couple ladders. We'll put everything on the front of the ship. And now that we have that there, do I have ammo storage? I do not have ammo storage. Okay, so for ammo storage, that's going to go right there. And then, I would like to curve this ship out a little bit more, make it a little bit sexier. We have to build it inside the budget of our current cash. We only have $888, so we spent 455 already. I think we should be in decent shape to do what we want here without things falling apart too badly. Uh, fire suppression is probably a good idea, just in case things go very, very wild. Our service ceiling is down to 204 meters. This thing is not going to be able to fly very high unless we add another suspendium chamber. But if we add another suspendium chamber, we're going to have to double up on coal. And so it's kind of a situation where it can get kind of crazy. But we can add another suspendium. Like, if we put a suspendium right there, we can now get up to 400 meters. Put another one right there, put another one right there, and as you can see, that'll get us up to like 600 or so meters. We, we can fly reasonably high, but I don't think there's a reason for it right now. That'll also force us to double up on crew and have all, all kinds of other stuff going on. Uh, we need supply hatches. So what a supply hatch does is it's how a crew gets into and out of your ship. If you don't have supply hatches, your crew cannot disembark, they cannot restock, they can't really do a whole lot. And so I would recommend you absolutely have one of those. In fact, it won't let you build a ship without one, so keep that in mind. We've got muskets over here. Grenades. It's time to arm this thing. So I'm going to put ammo storage in, I guess, right here. That's a little far from where our operational weapon centers are going to be. 
Oh, never mind. We already have an ammo storage. Never mind. It's right there. I already put it on the smart side of the ship. Nice. Okay, and then we'll worry about making this thing more beautiful in just a minute. Uh, I want cannons. I like cannons a lot. So let's go ahead and each one of these cannons, though, is really affecting our, our flight ceiling. That'll have to do for right now. I really don't want to put another suspendium chamber on this thing. But this ship is more or less functional right now. Like, this has everything that it needs in order to get up into the air and to function. And so that's fine. It doesn't have a very good flight ceiling. But it's kind of beefy and tanky and kind of large. And so we'll probably keep it at low altitude to soak, sh like to soak shots from the enemy and whatnot until we get into other situations. So we've got a medium bow right there. We've got a round quarter turn. I do want to round the ship out a little bit. Like, I think that sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, that works. Do I have one that is horizontal now? I do. A 2x1 block. We have a 3x1? Yeah, that'll work. Perfect. I just want the ship to look a little bit nicer. I don't want it to be like an ugly mass of bullshit. Unfortunately, these are affecting my weight and my budget, too. I wish the decorative pieces did not, but sometimes you get what you want, sometimes you don't. I'll probably take something like that right there. And sit it on that side. And the last thing that I need is I actually think I just need filler blocks. And then we should be good. Yep. Looks decent to me. I mean, is it a perfectly gorgeous airship? Absolutely no, it's not. But it looks alright stylistically. I think it'll work. Uh, we can save this design. Uh, we can call it... I'm going to call this the Foot Soldier. And in fact, we'll go with like a, we'll go with, we'll go with kind of dragon designation since that seems to be in the theme of the game. This is going to be the worm. So there it is. And then as they get bigger, they'll be like the wyvern, the drake, the dragon, and so on and so forth. Each denoting essentially its tonnage and how good it is at fighting. You know, we're going from like light frigates to medium frigates down to corvettes, stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and we will build this design. I'll probably modify it a little bit further. Once I get farther into the game, I'll probably round that out a little bit right there. But this is all right. I don't mind it. It's a little heavy, but eh, you know, it should be okay. And so we're refitting right here. We need to do research too. Uh, the first thing that we can research is we can go with aerial tactics and get harpooners, which will allow you to affix the enemy to your ship so that your marines can jump overboard and take it over. We can go with the aerial core, which gives us aerial hussars. We can get fire extinguishers. We can get rocket launchers. Uh, we can get upgraded cannons and heavier armor. I'm going to go with aerial hussars because that sounds legit as hell. I don't know why aerial hussars sound so dope. But if you don't know what a Hussar is, Hussars are those guys, like, you ever see the box art of Mountain Blade uh, with fire and sword? The the kind of, cav you got the kind of cavalry guys that are riding into combat with the giant wings on their backs and everything? On their armor, those are Hussars. They're basically like armored cavalry, and they're pretty cool. But yeah, Hussars are kind of like Polish cavalry, if I remember correctly. They got, like, wings on their armor. They look all badass. But anyways, uh, we got stuff to do. We have our starting fleet right now. We can click on this guy. We have another ship being constructed right now. And frankly, this ship is kind of overly large. Like, I don't understand... I don't understand why this is on the bottom of this ship. Like, this is just... This is just, like, nonsense down here. Like, we don't need any of that. Like, if you want to keep the decorative bits, I guess we could leave, like, a small keel on this side, but this is, like, you don't you don't need any of that stuff right there, and that brought our service ceiling up by, like, 50 meters. It also raised our base speed. So, I don't know, this, this ship is kind of weirdly built. I don't, I don't like it very much. Like, it's plausible that if we got rid of that right there, I could probably, I gotta fold up this decorative menu. This decorative menu's eating up all kinds of space right now. I'm used to being able to, like, fly around and grab what I need real fast at any moment. And uh, we got a guard barracks. I mean, we could put a marine barracks in here. We could also do a grape shot cannon. That might work out. Yeah, let's put in a grape shot cannon right there. Why not? Who doesn't love a grape shot cannon? It's like a rifle, but better. And I'm going to put another one in over here, too. You think I'm kidding right now. You think I'm kidding. How much grape shot can I put on this thing? Uh, we're going to call this the Thunderbelly. 
no, I don't. <laughs> I didn't want a cannon down by the OK. No, not the Thunder Bellies. Damn it. There we go. No, not the. Mm. Mm. There. This will be the Thunder Belly. Cool. Let's refit it. The refitting is going to take a minute, so we're not really accomplishing much right now. But while we wait for that, we can take a spy and we can put him inside of Leoc. And inside of Leoc, we have this tower right here, which is actually kind of a beefy tower. I can pay 600 bucks to have my spy sabotage it, but I think we can probably kill it. It looks like it's made out of steel. It's going to be a pain, but hopefully it doesn't go too badly. Uh, keep the game running, please. We'll go ahead and speed things up. We'll probably be under attack shortly, too. The AI doesn't really... Oh, really? We should cannibalize these guys right now. This army right here just pushed in and took one of their territories. We should push in and take this right now. Essentially, you got to cannibalize them somehow. So here's the battle, all right? So we've got our one target right there. Our booty rushers over here. This guy can fly around. We can move our basic deployment. His service ceiling is right there, which is actually not that low. What's his service ceiling? Much lower. Yeah, I figured it would be. All right, so we've got these things in position where I feel comfortable having them. Let's go ahead and start the battle. And so with these two guys right here, I can actually tell them to move in formation up to like right there and that's exactly what they're gonna do we can zoom in and we can take a look as you can see right now they're both spouting out coal and doing their thing uh, we're missing a lot of our shots right now but they're only using rifles so I think in the long term we should win this fight I don't think we're gonna have too many problems uh, since this guy's using grape shot we're gonna have him move up a little bit closer which is dangerous and in to respond to that, we're going to have him rotate up a little bit higher at a little bit more severe of an angle to maintain his, his cannon arc so that he can still hit things. Uh, we should be able to take this territory no problem, I think. I love the little conversations that your guys have while you're flying around. They'll be like, I need more coal! Someone hand me that charge! Like, and so this is one of the bunkers, one of the many bunkers you're going to be destroying during this game. Later on, we will be building bunkers as well. Airships are not the only thing you can build in this game. You can build bunkers, you can build defenses, you can build forts to defend from other people's airships. Uh, you can go in and you can design land crawlers, which are basically giant mega tanks, like Gustav gun style mega tanks. Like, there is so much fun stuff you can do in this game, and I can't recommend it enough, seriously. If you like Mountain Blade and you like building, you should definitely check this game out because I think you're going to have the best time ever. I'm hoping we finished our winged hussars research before. Oh, that guy got nailed in the face with a cannon. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Y'all need to get this rifleman right here. Why is this rifleman such a challenge? We might need another ammo storage bay inside this place. It looks like his ammo is kind of low. You can tell that by looking at the ammo storage place. It's got a little meter right there. So they're almost out of ammo on this side, but I think it's because they only have a small ammo depot. This thing might need a bigger ammo depot. There we go. And so it's going down now. We've defeated the enemy. We will take their territory, and we will claim it for our empire. Kanata will fall. Uh, so we can do a gentle takeover, we can do a brutal takeover, or we can pillage. I'm going to go with a gentle takeover because we're planning on keeping this place forever. And so we kind of want to aggressively grow our territory if we can. I really don't want him to get the capital. A fire caused by a foreign agent has destroyed the fragment of Fragment of Shining Tower at Lyok. You may need to strengthen your empire's secret police, the details strength. Okay. All right. So in Lyok, we can't build defenses just yet, but we're going to want to because I'm pretty sure these guys are going to come knocking. So these guys are coming to invade our city right now. They're going for Drassel. All right. Go ahead and hey, stop them off right there. We may have to auto-resolve this one. I'm almost positive we're going to lose this fight. That's a pretty beefy ship, actually. kind of surprised how big that ship is this early in the game. That's like, it's a solid steel machine. Ooh, these defenses right here. What were you thinking when you designed this? We only have riflemen? All right, let's go ahead and flee, because we're going to lose anyways. Uh, we're going to come down here. We're going to sort it out. Oh, please believe. You're getting fixed up, pal. You're getting fixed up. I'm getting my territory back. It may have changed hands, but these lands are this man's. 
All right, we'll start out right there, nice and close, just kind of beefing with him. We'll slug it out with him right now. Uh, you kind of follow. And y'all give chase. Try to keep as many rounds on him as you possibly can. Like, we don't have to get too crazy in here. I mean, he's soaking most of the damage with his gun sides, so that's okay. I don't know what he's trying to do right there, but we'll flip around. Go ahead and drop altitude right there. And then you swing back so that we've got him pincered. Perfect. Oh, he flipped around too. Okay, so you guys move over to here. Make sure you stay on him. You continue to give chase and pressure. And in fact, never mind. You flip back this way. Full stop. I need as many guns as I can get firing on this thing. I, sometimes I wish they would flip around first. Maybe I can do that with a movement command. I don't know yet. I'm not experienced enough with the game, but maybe I can flip first. You need coal. You shouldn't need coal right now. Uh, don't ram, but definitely block that. They're trying to escape right there. He's almost out of guns on this side. There you go. He's done. The enemy is hiding in the fog. He's not hiding in the fog. He's defeated. If that's hiding, then... Technically, if I had Marines right now, I could invade his ship and take it over and keep it for myself, but I don't have Marines at the moment, so not really going to be a fantastically good option. You guys need to pull closer. You're wasting ammo right now. Like, it'll probably burn down all on its own. There you go. Perfect. And then you move forward to fill the gap. Because this inaccuracy is not working for me right now. Supplies of ammo are getting low. Yeah, it's because you guys are wasting tons of shots not hitting anything. It's a little crowded over here. Did they bust up my armor right there? What a bunch of jerks. What a bunch of jerks. All right, get close. There we go. I need you guys to be like point blank because our accuracy is like non-existent. There it is. I think we finally hit the ammo storage. Maybe. We shot the walls off right there, so these guys should go down next. These guys definitely need more ammo. This ship needs way, way... It's called the Hygiene? Alright. Well, we took back Drassel, so that's good. Uh, that was our territory to begin with. But yeah, this game is called Airships Conquer the Skies. Hope you guys have liked it so far. I think this game is a lot of fun, and there's a ton of really creative ideas you can do with the building and the different systems. The stuff you've seen at the game right now, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much cool equipment and so much fun stuff in this game. Ooh, our aerial hussars are done? Ooh... We can also get triplanes, heavier than air flight. We can get efficient ammo storage. Yeah, I could probably want to work towards that. I would I would like to have more ammo. Ammo seems to be a big stopgap for us. But yeah, if you wanted to get the game for yourself, i got a link for you down below. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like on it. It helps out more than you know. I will see you next time. Thank you for stopping on by, and hi-do, everybody.